A very good evening and welcome to this Sunday's edition of News First Weekend coming to you live from our News First studios in Colombo. I'm Arundhati Mudan Nayak. Let's start off with a look at the stories making headlines this evening. Tilanga Sumathipala elected president of Sri Lanka cricket. Results of the first A-level examination held on the seven streams released. Minister Sajid Premadasa highlights development obstacles faced by the new government. Geeta Kumar Singer criticizes good governance. An everyday hero. In your top story this evening, Tilanga Sumuthi Parla was elected to a two-year term as president of Sri Lanka cricket at the SLC election held this morning. Notably, the candidates who won the remaining six key positions on the SLC Executive Committee were all from the Sumatipala faction. The SLC election got underway at the auditorium of the Sports Ministry today amid tight security. Sports first live coverage of the pre-election events was telecast live on Sirisa TV. Sirisa TV, Sirisa FM, YFM, Samagami, Vikash Yaklesa, Apa Me Mohote Sita, Geninata, Balapurutunwa. Tilanga Sumatipala won 88 of the 145 votes to claim the position of president of SLC for the third time. His opponent, former SLC secretary Nishanta Ranatunga, only received 56 votes. Jayanta Dharmadasa with 102 votes and K. Mativanan with 90 votes were elected as the two vice presidents of SLC. Minister Arjuna Ranatunga and Asanga Senivratna, who also contested for the vice president positions, fell short, receiving only 80 and 18 votes respectively. As a result of a last-minute withdrawal from Hiranta Pereira, Mohan De Silva was elected Secretary of SLC uncontested. Ravin Vikramaratna was elected Assistant Secretary with 113 votes, while his opponent Nilantha Ratnayaka received only 30 votes. Shami Silva was elected Treasurer with 115 votes, while his opponent Eastman Narangoda received only 28 votes. Lalit Rambukwalla was also elected to the position of assistant treasurer with a comfortable margin, polling a total of 108 votes in comparison to the 36 votes polled by his opponent, Nihal Leuke. Well, let me at the outset uh, thank His Excellency Maitripala Sirisena for allowing for a free and fair democratic, democratically elected process for us and democratic election for our cricket elections. We are trying to divide our responsibilities within ourselves. Uh, first priority is to make sure we are transforming our national team into a winning team and consistently winning team, uh, sustain at the top. Um, we want to have a competitive, strategically uh, planned uh, national team, which we believe we lack professionalism in our national team. We need, need to bring that back. We don't have a national coach to start with. Mr. Jayanta will be uh, in charge of uh, our international cricket. Mr. Mativadan will be uh, handling entire domestic cricket. Uh, administration will be uh, totally in charge by Mr. Uh, Mohan De Silva. We want to look at our strengths and weaknesses, make sure we have a five-year business plan. In that five-year business plan, we're going to identify our priorities. Our first priority, second priority, third priority is going to be national team. Journalists also raised questions on Upali Dharmadasa casting his vote for his brother Jant Dharmadasa. He would have thought to elect the best person for the job. <laughs> Candidates who were not elected to the SLC board also spoke to News First. 
It was the decision of the membership. They were given a democratic opportunity. As sportsmen and administrators, we will not try to trip them up. We will assist them with the good things they do, and when they do something wrong, we hope to work against it. I do not think any public official faces a tougher task than conducting a cricket board election. I personally believe that in spite of some shortcomings, the sports director accomplished this task with commitment. Today the people can comprehend what the cricket mafia is. This is the second time. As an MP, I can contest from anywhere and win. But I cannot even win the position of vice president at a cricket election because of this business mafia. I congratulate the team that was elected. If there is any theft taking place, we will be keeping a close watch on them. The director general destroyed this. We will have to take a decision regarding him in the future because he is a director general who cannot implement the laws that are on paper. Upali Dalbadasa also commented on his decision to vote for his brother Chanta Dalbadasa. Even though we are brothers contesting on two sides, sometimes you have a duty to your brother and you respect your brother. So I cast my vote for my brother. The results of the 2015 GCE Advanced Level Examinations were released today. Incidentally, this is the first time in history that the results of seven subject streams were released simultaneously. News First, Pauline Rajendran joins us with details of those who obtained the best results in the examination. Thank you, Arunthati. In order to succeed, we must first believe that we can. I have with me the top best performers of the 2015 advanced level examinations with me right now. And I have with me Tepuli Umesha of the Ratnavali Balika with Dialey Gampa who obtained the best results in the bioscience stream. Jeeva Nainamali of Mali Deva Girls School, Kurunagala, who obtained the best results in the art stream. Akhil Mohammed from the Mali Deva College in Kurunagala, who obtained the best results in the commerce stream. And also Dasun Osha, the jazz singer of Royal College Colombo, who obtained the best results from the mathematics stream. Akhil, how did you prepare for the advanced level examinations? In three months prior to the exam, I started revising almost every note that I had, in, had within, with me. From the end of all levels, I had a definite goal in my head that I will somehow get a district rank, but I was, I was lucky to get an island rank. Tasun, what is the message you would give the students who are sitting for the upcoming uh, advanced level examinations? First of all, uh, you need to uh, just get rid of the uh, unnecessary uh, fear of the exams uh, and uh, you just have to uh, follow the notes, uh, you get into the A-level track and uh, just uh, do uh, pass papers uh, as more as you can and just uh, you should uh, face the exam uh, without any fear and I would uh, and you will uh, pass for sure. See at Asuat Atadiya, I can hammer the amage is called here. I attended school every day with over 80% attendance. That is one of the major reasons for my victory. I sat for all the school end of term examinations and did not miss the exams. I studied according to a timetable. I had an objective in mind and I worked towards it. My parents are one of the core reasons for my success. They worked hard to raise me. My father is a carpenter and he helped me a lot in my studies. <laughs> My sole objective was to get selected to the medical college in the very first attempt and make the dreams of my parents and teachers a reality. I was certain that I would pass, but I never imagined that I would score the best results in the examination. When I saw the results for the very first time on the internet, I double-checked my name. This was so unexpected and I'm very happy about it. Uh, These are just the top performers and there are many who did their best in this year's advanced level examinations and here are those details. 
Three new subject streams were included in the recent GCE advanced level examinations. Shanak Anurud, the summer kun of St. Thomas's College, Matle, received the best results in the engineering technology stream, which was introduced into the 2015 A level examination. This victory is the result of many sacrifices, hard work, and commitment. Vasana Navodhani Marsing of Dharma Palama Vidyalaya Bandaravala achieved the best results in the biosystem technology stream, which was also introduced for the first time. I sat for the exam under a new stream and that was a huge challenge. The technology lab has not been built in our school yet. I achieved this amidst all those difficulties. I request that they build the technology lab so my fellow students can further their education. Buddhika Chaturanga of Sivali Central College, Ratnapura, obtained island first place in the common and other subject streams. The common opinion in society is to always become a good doctor or a good engineer. I believe that there will be no pressure if you free yourself from ordinary thinking and select the stream you like so someday you can find a job in the field you like. For 309,069 students faced the 2015 GCE Advanced Level Examination. The Department of Examination says that the number of those who passed and failed will be released on the near future. Suspect of Vishen Hatarama Samatila, Lanka Vishavidyaleka, Upokulipati Vicha Mahachar Vurut. There were those who failed all four subjects in the Advanced Level Examination and went on to become the Vice Chancellors and Professors at universities. Facing the A Level Examination does not mean that life is over. It does not mean that your intelligence is low or that you have failed in life. This is simply a result. This does not measure success. Prepare yourself for the examination. Destroy the cordillera known as failure. Convert it into a staircase and move ahead. Minister of Housing and Construction Sajid Pemdas alleged that the opposition is sabotaging the development. He made these remarks speaking at an event in Dunugam, Behera. Minister Sajid Premadasa presided over the event to open the drinking water project in Senapura, Lunugam, Behera. Twenty-sixteen will be made the year where there will be massive development in the country. The President's anniversary of taking office is also marked and the Prime Minister is spearheading the development program. The group that lost the elections are attempting to create issues. This defeated section of the opposition must understand that the best thing to do is to step in front of the mirror and rectify their mistakes and be renewed. They must also allow the government to serve the people. The Mahajan ex of Thirumuna has slashed out at the government's plans to amend the constitution. At a media briefing held in Colombo today, party leader Dinesh Kunwagana had this to say. A proposal has been presented to Parliament to prepare a new constitution on the 9th. We have a unitary state at present, and the constitution has been amended 19 times. A 20th amendment was also proposed. At every instance, it was maintained that this is a unitary state. But these words are not included in the proposal the government has put forward now. There is no mention of a unitary state. The government is yet to explain to the country or to parliament why these words have not been included. There is a dangerous situation that the unitary state will be annulled. The proposal states that the Constitutional Council, which prepares the constitution, will compile it and after that it must be passed with a two-thirds majority, referred to the president, approved by the cabinet, approved in parliament and submitted for a referendum. There is no mention of going to the Supreme Court. Even if you are changing a word, you must go before the Supreme Court. But this has been removed from this proposal. President Maitri Pala Sirisena says that a broader discussion will be called for in order to decide as to whether the entire constitution needs to be amended or for a certain section of it be amended. Meeting with the heads of media institutions this evening, President Maitri Pala Sirisena had said that this should not be rushed and it should only be done after a broader discussion. President Sirisena says that it should be created in a manner in which the aspirations of the people are fulfilled and that the country not be dragged into another war. The President further stated that significant changes were made in the country with the amendments made to the 19th Amendment to the Constitution within a period of one year. Minister Faisal Mustafa issuing a statement says that a legal process was followed to postpone the local government polls. 
In July last year, the National Demarcation Committee that was appointed in December 2012 presented a report. However, as there were complaints made citing various issues, a legal committee was appointed to look into that. The statement by the Minister of Local Government and Provincial Councils reads that there is legal provision to postpone the election until the demarcation process is over. In response to a statement made by MP Uday Gamanpilo over the postponing of the local elections, the Minister went on to note that the MP should have a sound knowledge on the law before for making such statements. MP Geeta Kumar Singh is speaking in Alpidia commented on working with the government. Now I have to swim. What should my heading be? I am not sure if they would put me out of the parliament. People from the Gaul district are also attempting to chase me away. When this issue was at peak, President Maitripal Sirisena said that I will be made the co-organizer of the Benthare Alpidia electorate in Gaul. Then, Gayanta Karunathilak and I will be the co-chairpersons of the development committee. I do not like this in the government where both sides have come together. I must say the truth here. I cannot stand that. It's very weird. Are we to be silent when these things take place? Are we to provide the people with what they deserve? I'm thankful to President Maitripali Sirisena. I was granted this and I accepted it. However, if I see a wrongdoing, I will speak against that. If someone thinks that by accepting this I will be silent, then they are very wrong about it. Minister of Health Dr. Rajita Sena Ratna speaking at an event in Wadhuwa last evening commented on permitting the cultivation of hemp for the production of Ayurvedic medicine. There is a shortage of hemp in the country due to the less supply of it from India. It has been prohibited to bring this to the country from India. Therefore, we have plans of cultivating this plant in Sri Lanka under the strict policy. The army will also be used for this to commence the hemp trade in the country. This needs to be used by persons who are wise. We cannot control the after effects of this. There is something in this. There needs to be some sort of reaction. Police have arrested the chief suspect connected to shooting dead to shooting dead two persons in Agunukuna Palasa. Two persons armed with a T-56 rifle had arrived in a motorcycle to assassinate an individual. Police said that, however, the target who was in hiding had attacked the would-be assassins and shot at them with their own firearm. The chief suspect in the double murder who was in hiding in the Barawa Kubuka area was arrested following an operation carried out by the Crimes Investigation Unit of the Tangal Division. The police media spokesperson said that the suspect will be produced before the magistrate today. Uh, One of the two victims is aged 35 years. There are five cases that are being taken up against him with regard to the breaking and entering into of shops and houses as well as theft. There is also a case regarding molesting a 14-year-old girl. In 1993, when he was only 13, he was accused of slitting his father's throat and killing him. He was found guilty at the Hambantur High Court and was given a sentence suspended for five years. The other victim is a 25-year-old. There are five cases against him too for breaking and entering as well as molesting a 14-year-old girl. In addition, the person who murdered these two people is one known as Chandi. Investigations have revealed that the murder was the result of a dispute between the two groups. <laughs> You're with News First and up next is a look at Action TV. About a month ago, wildlife officials were able to subdue the most violent member of a herd of elephants at the Sirambahu elephant crossing in Nochiagama, the border between the northwestern and northern wildlife zones. The herd had been terrorizing numerous villages in the area for several months. In the dry months of June and July, when the water supply in Wilpatu dries up, the elephants use the Sirambahu are crossing to enter reserves with reservoirs, including Andhrawewa. The 250-acre jungle, which includes this crossing, had been maintained as a sanctuary owned by the Mahavihara in the past. When these lands were included in the Mahavali Rapid Development Program as the Et Zone, the jungle area, including the Sirambahu are crossing, was declared a reserve under the purview of the Mahavali Authority. Incidentally, this is also the catchment area for the Andhrawewa Reservoir. In 2011, the public unrest that broke out when 50 acres of the jungle was being cleared for a tourist hotel was subdued with intervention from the highest echelons of political authority.
By that time, the 250 acres had been divided up among three politicians, a monk and a businessman. Nevertheless, another section of this reserve, which remains protected with the exception of a 20-acre section, is being cleared at present. This is the present state of the Sirambahu crossing where about a month ago a ferocious wild elephant was subdued. By allowing a timber racket here, which is not even left behind the roots of the trees, the Mahavali authority has deprived the state of a considerable income. The Upper Purawasi organization, which struggled against many obstacles in the Anuradhapura district to establish good governance in the country, alleges that there is now a land racket taking place in Anuradhapura under good governance. Then may Pradesh will dam Matpatra and Imidi via Park and Argomanekanakamatam, Sabahavika Govitan and Atang. When acquiring lands in these areas, businessmen use catchphrases like environment friendly agriculture or eco agriculture. But what happens is the complete opposite. In the end, it is the ordinary villagers that suffer. As a citizens' organization, we condemn this and we call upon all environmental organizations and institutions in the country to immediately intervene in this matter. Given the inaction of authorities in putting a stop to the destruction taking place here, it is possible that they have forgotten the tragedy that occurred about a year ago when a wild elephant stampeded across the Udamalue area. Secretary to the Ministry of Mahaveli Development and Environment, over to you. The agrarian community in the Vineyard area say that the waste released from a paddy mill owned by a former deputy minister has posed a serious health threat. Mineria oil flows near the CB Pura in Mineria mixed with a black substance which contains paddy dust released from a paddy mill. Anyone can use the water beyond this point, but you can't bathe in it. If you do, it would be very harmful to your health. These farmers who had to shed their sweat to plough the fields had to suffer at the expense of their source of drinking water when the mill turns their paddy into rice. These people have come and have placed sandbags on the other side. When it gets blocked, they come from here and clean it. These visuals are a fine example to show that the only water source, the people of Hain Kulaveva, situated six kilometres from this location, has now become a health hazard to them. There are around 40 to 50 houses here. All the people here use this for drinking. Now can they use this water for bathing? Can't the officials see this? Apart from working tirelessly to save their harvests from insects, these farmers are now compelled to take out the dust released in the water from the paddy mill. Half of the saplings are covered with dust. We are taking out the ash. We cultivated this plot thrice. How are we to eat rice? When contacted for a reaction in this regard, SLFP parliamentarian and former Deputy Minister Sridhar Gamlat refused to comment. And let's take a look at more local stories in brief. A heavy mist is being experienced in several areas of the country. The situation was evident in Dambulla, Tulagala, Kandalama and several other areas. Our correspondents say that poor vision on the road resulted in disrupted vehicular movement. The body of a security officer serving at the construction site of the International Buddhist University in Kalania was discovered today at the premises. Police said that the night watchman's body was discovered this morning. The deceased was a 53-year-old from Valasmulla and the cause of death is yet to be ascertained. It was reported that fish rained down last night in Hingurangodapolo, Narua. A correspondent said that the rains lasted for around an hour. UNP MP Buddhika Patarana presided over a youth meeting. A group of individuals from the Samadhi Foundation of the Mathura District were present at the event. Employment is a serious issue faced by the youth. Jobs are divided as the public and private sector, government and ungovernmental and cooperative sector. Jobs are created. However, if you do not enhance your skill set, those centered in and around Colombo and the cities will be given more opportunities in the race for employment then the youth from the village will be given less priority. 
We believe that the human resources will be strengthened and we consider this as a great responsibility. For some times, being a hero simply means having the presence of mind to take the right course of action. We received a report from Balangura where such a quick thinking enabled a young man to save the life of a neighbor. A young man who climbed a 150-foot-tall jack tree in Balangoda to trim its branches had suddenly fainted atop the tree. Another youth, a neighbor who witnessed the victim's fate, acted immediately to secure him with a rope. <laughs> Later, with the assistance of area residents, the young man who had fainted was lowered to the safety of the ground. I quickly went up the tree. When I got to him, he was unconscious. He did not respond when I spoke to him. I grabbed him and tied the rope around him. And with the help of the people of the neighborhood, we lowered him down slowly. After he woke up, he did not remember anything. Doctors say the lad had fainted due to low blood sugar levels. The quick thinking of his neighbor no doubt saved him from a worse fate, possibly even death. Well, it has been reported that fungus has built around the iconic paintings in the Dambula Rock Temple, a World Heritage Site. The Dambul Rock Temple complex comprises of five caves adorned with frescoes from the Kanji era, 153 statues of Lord Buddha, the statues of three kings and the statues of four demigods. The historic paintings at this UNESCO World Heritage Site had previously been threatened by pests. A high-frequency sound wave emitter was then used to drive away the pests. At present, fungus had begun building on some of the paintings, which have also sustained some water damage. We have identified the problems posed by fungus, various microbes and the minor increase in water seepage, which has in fact existed since the Kanjan era. Instead of employing short-term conservation methods with the intention of utilizing a more long-term conservation solution, the Department of Archaeology together with experts in microbiology from the Kalani University has embarked on a research project. 28 December 2015, a section of a layer of plaster near the Sigiriya frescoes breaks away. Frescoes at the Dambul Rock Temple at risk of being destroyed. With that, we wrap up tonight's edition of News First Weekend. Thank you very much for joining us. Good night.